We're starting a reading vlog. Yeah, we are. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. You need to get away. It's time we make a change. Oh, you know you'll always have me. Olive Blake. This is about two people. I think it's like loosely based on, um, or it's, yeah, it's loosely based on or a fictionalized account of her and her husband when they met. And so our main character in this, a woman has bipolar disorder. I've only read 13 pages so far, and we've only heard from the perspective of the guy, so Aldo, and he's depressed. And so far, I have already started the waterworks in my eyeball in <laughs> my eyes have already started watering um, quite a bit in these 13 pages. Hi Watson, thank you for your tale. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the bipolar depression dynamic um, and to see how bipolar disorder is represented in this. I think the the best, well not I think, the absolute best book that I've read with bipolar representation was Jeffrey Eugenides The Marriage Plot. One of the books that I've read in my life that has affected me the absolute most and that has such an incredible depiction of bipolar disorder. So we'll see how this goes because it is own voices. What I did earlier was go to Barnes and Noble and I picked up a book that I needed for a book club that I am in slash starting. It's new, excited about it. This is the book that we are reading. Violetta by Isabel Allende. It should be interesting, hopefully. Maybe this week, so I've been really into the Woman's Prize for Fiction and the International Booker Long List. So I'm kind of, I've been picking through, well, I'll be picking through those books this week. I have two from each prize list. The books that I could choose from this week are The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, which is on my TBR list, so let me go. Or I could get to Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. Or we have The Gospel According to the New World by Maurice Condy. And, and then I have Is Mother Dead by Dictis Horth. Horth? Yeah. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's go drop off some books at a little free library, because I need to start getting rid of things. I need to start getting rid of things. I, I want you to myself. We can stay in hotels. Just living off the edge. Only good times ahead. So let me put a smile upon your face.
and I have about 100 pages left of it. I'm planning on finishing it today. I feel mentally and emotionally drained today. I do have conflicting feelings on this book. I feel like when I started reading it, I thought that it was really great, basically, essentially. Um, really going to be going somewhere deep, del delving into mental health, which it is for sure. Um, but I thought that there would be lots of layers and nuance to it. It was going to open up a wider, deeper discussion. And I don't get the f that feeling from it at all, if I'm being completely honest. And it actually reads, which I'm not saying this is a bad thing by any means. It just was not my expectation, so it's throwing me off. It reads very new adult. I don't want to say YA, but it kind of kind of feels like it's missing something so it's keeping me at arm's length. I also feel like the relationship between Regan and Aldo as it's been on page in the book it's <sighs> this book is way more so focused on Regan's mental health and which I like and Aldo's mental health and the way each of them view the world and kind of how that affects their relationship but you don't really see I feel like so much the building of the relationship at a certain point it's really just the mental kind of spiraling which i do appreciate watson come here but i think that it would be much better as a f more fleshed out fuller meatier story and um, because then because like i was saying i do feel like the mental digressions and spiraling is really showing tr truthfully truthfully showing what actually happens in people's fucking brains. It's really displaying that well, but it, but again, I feel like it's missing a level of something. It feels very insulated, as in this is just kind of these this person's experience, while I do think a large group, large, large, large group, would be able to relate to parts of it. Again, just as a full piece, the book, I just feel like it's lacking something, and so it's like whatever for me. I do want to share... This, the page that I'm currently on, I'm on page 172 and 173. <sighs> I feel it. I feel it hardcore. You ready for it? The first time they fight, she knows she loves him because she has never been worth the fight before. With others, with Mark, it was always, Regan, please be reasonable. Regan, I don't want to do this right now. I'm tired. Regan, are you being difficult because you're bored? And for her, it was always, fine, fine, I'm sorry. Maybe not the I'm sorry part because she was almost never sorry, but the giving up was always there. The sense of resignation, it was inescapably tied to the fight. Before Aldo, love was concession. Love was a withering yes, dear, and the sensation of don't fight. Be careful of the eggshells. You are not at home here and can easily be sent away. Did I almost start crying in the last sentence? Yes. Did we hold it together? Watson, did we hold it together? Yes. Now, on to the bottom of one of page 173, okay? Regan has always been good at that, at making people hate her or love her, depending on her mood, but she has never given any thought to her thoughts. Then he says it, I love your brain, and she is so stunned, she wants to fight with him all over again. She wants to fling things at him wildly. God is a myth. Time is a trap. Virginity is a construct. Love is a prison. Just to make him say it again, to make him prove it true. Oh, you love my brain? Well, do you love it when it does this thing or this thing? Do you love it when it means I'm lifeless on the floor, curling my tongue? I'm crying. I didn't make it through this one. Lifeless on the floor, curling my tongue around a pill or a stranger's dick. Can you love my brain even when it is small, even when it is malevolent, when it is violent? Can you love it when it doesn't love me? And I'm going to turn it off now because I'm getting emotional. Let's run away. We can go where we want. I'll have your back if you'll have mine. You and I, you and I. She practices piano on her thigh Imagining the keys inside her mind Does she notice The things I notice This book is 
hard for me to read because unfortunately it's incredibly relatable. I don't know what that says about myself, but it's very popular. So I think a lot of people relate to this. What does that say about the time that we're living in? Nothing great, I'm assuming. Nothing fun. I don't know. What's going on? On page 208, actually, this quote got me. You ready for it? Okay, she wanted to cry, needed compulsively to suffer. Jesus, she thought, you really have a fucking problem. And so she left all her madness out of her phone calls to Aldo. When she talked to him, she tried to make all her words beautiful, sensual, like she was painting for him with her voice. She didn't tell him the depravity of her imaginings or the repulsion she felt with them or with herself. Cool, cool. You know, man, I just need to finish this book up. I just need to finish this book up. It is hard for me to read. It's making me feel weird on the inside. It really is. I still I still stand to my prior statement. I do feel like there's something missing from it as like a separate piece, you know, like a, in itself. But lots of things I can pull out of it. We have moved on with our life and with our feelings. Happy to report, I definitely, as I continued reading this book, don't actually relate to these characters. There was just moments or quotes that, that I could personally feel, you know? But I did not like this book. I did not like this book, Alone With You in the Ether. I think I'm going to give it two stars. I'm going to give it two stars. Let's choose our next read. Okay, I'm picking between these three. This also just came in the mail, which is another book on the Booker International long list. It's Stillborn by Guadalupe, Guadalupe Nettle. They're both about motherhood. And then I have Is Mother Dead, which is about a woman's relationship with her mother. I love these end papers. So I thought we should read the first sentence together and decide. She would contact me if mom died. She has to. Hasn't she? First sentence. No opinion thus far. Boulder, a night years ago, sometime after 10, no sky, no vegetation, no ocean, only the wind, the hand that grabs at everything. I like that, feeling very poetic. Oh, stillborn. A couple of weeks ago, some new neighbors moved into the apartment next door. I'm gonna read Boulder. Our eyes wander the room when it gets quiet. Searching for solutions in the silence But I'm here I'm here Okay, we're in a great mood today. Ooh, let's take our slippers off. It's kind of cold. My window's open, so you might hear that. Oh, hello, beautiful world and fresh air. Okay, so I finished Boulder by Eva... Baltazar, translated by Julia Sanchez. I read this all, like I read this in a day. So I read this yesterday and I have since then started, let's grab it before I tell you about this one. I've since then started Is Mother Dead by Victus Horth, Horth, translated by Charlotte Barland. I'm like 12 pages into this and I already really love it. Like really in loving it so far and I have high hopes high hopes we have high hopes we have high up up high in the sky hopes yes we do Frank Sinatra um yes we do Boulder how did I feel about this so I ended up giving this three stars this is about a couple this is about a lesbian couple one of them is Spanish and she's a chef and she was like working on a, she had like a bunch of different jobs and didn't like to be tied down anywhere. She worked on a cruise ship or on some sort of ship as a chef. And then she meets this woman, I already do not remember that. I think Samsa is her name, Samsa, who is Norwegian. Samsa one day when she's like 40 or before she turns 40, decides she wants to have a baby. So she, it's kind of about the process of going through in vitro and it's really from our main character's perspective. It's kind of her, from her perspective, not wanting to have a child and her going through this process with her partner, but also then feeling so, like she's not necessarily missing out on this 
thing, ha- creating a baby, having a baby, being a mother, but she feels it's her observing her separateness then from SAMHSA and this club essentially that you're then kind of a part of as being this baby making woman. It just had me thinking a lot about partnership and when one person has a baby or can have a baby or chooses to have a baby, how that could separate partners. Not, I'm not saying it does, but how that the difference of what our bodies go through, especially regarding something like that, and the connection that one parent who has grown this child inside of them can have with the child, and then it takes one person kind of outside of the relationship, or it puts one person slightly removed from the relationship. It kind of had me thinking about that a little bit. It made me a little made me a little bit sad. Not not in an extreme way, just in a realistic way. It made helped me to observe something about a partnership situation that I had never really thought of before, which I thought was interesting. It there's also a little bit of cheating going on in here. Not a big fan of that. Not gonna lie, not a big fan of that. I don't understand why that had to be a part of it, but I guess it is what it is. I still don't necessarily feel like it was saying like it needed to be in the story. I don't think it was necessarily adding to some deeper topic that was trying to be discussed, though maybe again that concept of separateness and trying to feel like you need to be connected to something else or being reconnected to yourself. But it wasn't saccharine in any kind of way. It was just very matter of fact. Yes, I, I didn't fully, fully love this book. I feel like it was beautifully written and there were lots of beautiful quotes and passages you could pull from it. Should I just randomly read one? Okay, page 47. This is when I realized that sex is the easiest lie because the thing we call soul and which seems to live in the shared chamber of love isn't real. It's not anything, just a pair of devoted eyes. And they depend on the body, on the body and the brain, which know exactly how to imbue the eyes with passion. So it's easy to hush her by sucking on her neck and on her tongue, and on her lips by taking away her breath and killing her resolve, by staring into her eyes for ten minutes, fifteen, half an hour, and sinking into her what she needs, words, as my hands give and take away desire, and with it the bitterness and distress, drawing circles in the place where she is waiting for me at the start, and apparent end of the truth between us, which is to say everything. Very beautifully written. Again, I just don't think that it was anything amazing amazing, but it was interesting. I do recommend it if it sounds kind of up your alley, if the concept of motherhood or partnership and childbearing is something that you think about ever. Um, I think it's great. Okay, yes still reading this, which is about an artist and her relationship with her mother. They grew apart because the artist was like making art about her family and the mom didn't like it or something. I don't know. I'm 12 pages into it. I'll let you know when I know more. I finished Is Mother Dead by Vig Vigdis Horth, translated by Charlotte Barland. Um, and this book is about, I mean, essentially what I said in the beginning. It's about a woman who's in her 60s or she's 60 or turning 60 and it's about her relationship with her mother and her sister kind of but mostly her mother our main character hasn't spoken to or seen or heard really anything about her mother for or her family really for 30 years about this woman who's 60 who is really curious about her mom because she's kind of now that she's getting older becoming her mother it's like you see there's like a line in here like you see your mother as the the vision of what you become and she just is older now and she has nostalgia and she misses her family and she misses her mom essentially there were some really beautiful moments in this for me as a reader i felt like it was very redundant at points got to be very repetitive when she was just kind of stalking her mother essentially and kind of repeating a lot of things over and over again. So we see her in present day driving to all these places in the city where she knows that her mother is and her sister and comparing herself to her sister. And she's trying to convince herself all these things that her mother misses her and her sister's just not letting her do these things. And her mother thinks about her all the time and her mother actually wants her and, and this and that and this and that. And sometimes I couldn't tell if 
these were stories she was just trying to convince herself or she's trying to reason things out or if they were things that were actually happening so I kind of had to go back and reread it and then it wasn't really until like the climax of the story or the end where I felt like the meeting point you know what I'm saying and she actually learned the truth or what was actually kind of going on and then we got moments of her past so like hearing about her past as a child but there were really beautiful moments in this book so I'll read on page 123 do I feel alone in the world? No, not in the way they think or imagine because I have always felt alone in the world. It's my default setting. Not even life with Mark could banish it, although the feeling lessened during the years I shared with him because he also knew that feeling. Mark too felt alone in the world. When he died, I returned to my default setting after the first two years of crazy grief. The feeling of my childhood and youth, it felt almost precious. I had merely had a break from it with Mark. I had my sketchbook, I had my pencils, I have canvases and tubes of paint and brushes. I'm as close to John as I can be to anyone, as close as I dare to because I'm a damaged child. I don't miss anyone. The only thing I might miss is insight. It's kind of told in this vignette style and there are some longer passages. I really liked that format and I also really liked the moments of her own personal solitude where she's talking about the forest and it just made me think of like where she was living and being I just I love moments like that because it takes you out of the, the issues of her life or the issues of the narrative of the story and it shows the quiet peaceful moments of existence that that exists no matter what's going on around you or what's going on in your head you can always kind of go back to these moments and for in in this character's case it was kind of being in the forest in the home that she was staying in um so i really really like that i'll share one or two more passages that i loved um but i will say first i loved how this ended kind of what i was talking about going back to the mundane moments of peacefulness when you, you take yourself out of the problem. In any story, right? It's not issue after issue consistently. There are moments of reprieve and within the, the chaos or within the tumult. And I loved how this ended about the spaghetti. It was just three things remain. Clothes must be soaked overnight and then rinsed out three times. Spaghetti is cooked and when it sticks to the child, splash back behind the cooker. A fool and his money are soon parted. The most important one is the one about the spaghetti. And it reminds me of a book that I read. I, I like when it ends with the mundanity. Anywho, on page 333, I arrive, I walk the path through the forest, I reach the cabin and let myself in. It's not until I sit down that the paralyzing pain of my childhood comes back. I had expected it, but not like that. I had thought the pain was familiar to me, that it had faded and become manageable, but it envelops me with renewed vigor. Fortunately, experience has taught me that when it hurts so much, I think I'll pass out, that's when it starts to evaporate. Like people who lose a limb in an accident say they didn't feel a thing because the nervous system can't transmit that much pain to the brain. The system is overloaded. That's what will happen if I let it come without fighting it. And then this is on page 337. I have traveled widely, Mom, but probably walked in circles most of the time, Mom, carrying you in your heavy sadness, Mom, but it has to end now, Mom. I'm tired, Mom, and I have nothing more to say, Mom. I'm going to my shelter, Mom. I was a child once with dreams of finding you, and now I'm a woman and I give you up. I say goodbye and I bury you. I lift you from me and set you down and cover you with moss and mulch. I remember the smell of your jacket as I pulled it off you and off your jumper. And of your jumper, when I pushed up the sleeve, I don't like that smell anymore. It's a sign. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Then I leave without looking back. Oh, that was beautiful. But I did really like Is Mother Dead, and I do really recommend it. If it sounds interesting to you, if maybe you're interested in reading about someone's relationship with a lot, not a lost parent, someone's relationship slash non-relationship with a parent or with their family. I think any parent it could absolutely apply for sure, but this one's more so about a mother and it's all about a mother and a daughter and her sister. But yes, now I have already started reading on, I've already started reading The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. How far into it am I? I am on page 40 and I have no opinion so far. I feel like it's slow to get started. I'm not sucked into it, but I have no negative opinion at all. I just, you know, honestly, I just have no opinion yet. So we will see how that goes as we continue to read it. Oh, oh, wait, let's see if I can do this. Ah, 
Oh, you're rude. Oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh. She's slick with it. Oh, mm, look at her. Look at her go. That was not good. I have to admit, that was not good. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Won't she turn around? Won't she look at me? Oh, please. Won't she notice me? I want her to notice. I don't notice the Space between us now It's just like miles And I've only ever fit Inside the shadow But I'm here I'm here Everywhere. Hello, update. We are outside. Such a beautiful day. It's been so rainy and cold lately. So I'm really now enjoying sitting outside in the sunshine. I have my pajamas on and I feel good about it. I have some green tea. Reading update though. I got like 80 pages into The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell and it's just not serving me, right? At the moment, It's I feel like it's putting me I've been in a reading slump and it's not engaging me at all and I feel like 80 pages in and I should be engaged. Um, Maggie O'Farrell is such a beautiful writer and this is so richly, it's slow and it's really richly showing you uh, the time period in which this is set, which I think is fantastic, but it's just not what I need at the moment. So I'm putting this down. I'm really just trying to get back in my reading flow and I don't I don't want to test that at all. If something's even remotely not serving me, it's it's being put down and that's okay. Life's too short. But that being said, I did pick up another historical fiction um, only because it's the book for my book club, which I did pick up earlier in this video at the bookstore. And that's Violetta by Isabel Allende. I will for sure be reading this. If I like it or not, I will for sure be reading this because it's my book club book. And so I'm like 26 pages into it and I have no opinion thus far. It's fine. Um, yes, I just have to read this so it will be read. I'm over here, she's everywhere. 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 I'm over here. Okay, so I am making myself lunch. 
It's a bowl of oatmeal with protein stuff and fruit in it. I don't know. I'm just putting oats in a bowl and mixing stuff. I finished Violetta by Isabel Allende. I ended up giving this three stars. This was technically my second Isabel Allende novel. I read The Japanese Lover five years ago. I don't recall liking it. I probably wouldn't have continued reading this if it wasn't for a book club. Not because it was bad by any, by any means. Like it was a solid read. It was fine. It was a good story. Isabel Allende is a well-known author. Uh, she knows what she's doing and she has her audience right? I do not think I am that audience. I think that at least in this story, Violetta, so she was telling the story of Violetta's life from when she was born in during the Spanish influenza and then she dies basically in 2020, during 2020. She's telling the story of her life through the century, so through the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century, but mostly basically through the 20th century. And we get the history of Mexico, so she lives in Mexico, um, the political history of Mexico through the stories of her family members. Pretty much what it's about. It's about her family and the things that they get up to and how they're involved and different things here and there. I don't... She was not taking you... You weren't involved in the story at all. She was telling you a story. It was all tell, don't show. It did easily sweep you along. Um, so I do consider it, I mean, it is an easy read. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's, it's easy to, I don't want to say be immersed in it. It sweeps you along, basically. But I just didn't really care. It, like, keeps you at arm's length. Um, it keeps you at arm's length. Power and the strength of, st strength of this story for me personally was seeing how many people actually come into your life and affect it so greatly. Just in one lifetime and how much happens just in one lifetime um, and how different and unique family members are and just again how different people affect you in your life and how important every single person is that that touches you in different ways however I do not think it's like a must read unless you're interested in the history of of Mexico I do feel like you know there's a lot about that going on in there uh, or the history of the 20th century you're minorly interested in it and just want kind of like a passive, easy read. It was fine. It was fine. I finished, though. Um, but that's going to wrap up this vlog. This is my delicious looking... Look at this. Doesn't that look great? I'm going to add more peanut butter to it because I feel like it... Oh my gosh! I feel like chocolate chips would be good in this. Let's add some chocolate chip. Ooh, they're mini. Even better. Okay. Yes. That is the end of this vlog. Have you read any of these books? Have you read any any of the Woman's Prize books? Because I feel like I kind of dipped out of that. Honestly, the, um, the Maggie O'Farrell book, The Marriage Portrait, just kind of took me out of that. I'm just trying to find books that I actually want to read, which sounds like a super simple statement, but I've just been in such a reading slump this year and I feel like if I'm not fully engaged in a book, I don't want to waste my time. I just don't want to waste my time. I feel like I found pretty good books actually in this vlog, um, but none of them are like all-time favorites. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a new all-time favorite and everything else is kind of minorly disappointing me. Not to end on a negative note. Everything's great and beautiful. This was a great book. Three stars. That's a good rating. That is a good rating. Anyway, have a great day. Live, laugh, love, life. Okay, bye. <laughs>